Quattro Adventure on the NES. Four games in one. Now, I probably should get you a bit of a history run here. Back in the late 80s, there are a ton of companies taking advantage of Nintendo kind of giving up on the NES. Sure, it was popular, but they had a new console coming out. The SNES, or Super Nintendo. And with the release of their 16-bit console, they didn't really look into suing companies. So companies like Color Dreams and uh, Comerica and Active Enterprises took advantage of it. You know, a lot of them used bizarre schemes to uh, override Nintendo's lockout chip. Look at this. I mean, position A, position B only uses position of game does not work in position A? Interesting. Now you start up the cartridge, you can get the simple uh, menu. And, uh, I mean, most of these games have a menu like this. The only thing that sucks is you have to reset the cartridge to, uh, well, not even, you have to power it off and on to change the games. Which is one feature Action 52 had was the ability to go back. But let's play the games in order. So let's start with Linus Spacehead. We get this fancy uh, title screen. Well, I guess that's why the space head. Was that? I don't mean to be rude, but I think it's a bit too much to ask to give you a timed underwater level as the first one, with exotic constructions such as the speed of the bubbles. Also, what's with the dying? I mean, what's with that? He goes from being mad from running to all of a sudden being happy. Now, this game has these small things that you have to go and get, but aside from that, I mean, there's not much. It takes forever to get to this level, because the bubble's caught. I mean, there's not enough bubble, do you? Second level, like the beach? Wait a minute. There's a Nintendo game with a play on words that relates to a bad word. Now, I mean, it's not like bitch is a bad word, but... I mean, look! This game has a word referring to bitch in it. A game with that! What looks like a combination of an onion and a smurf. With a cape on. Anyways, I don't know. So, uh, unlike the first level, this level has you running across the sea. Avoiding coconuts. And happily falling into the flipping water. And I've got two lives left. Now these scrolls are missed. Now, aside from these stupid coconuts, this game is actually not that bad. Aside from the fact that the second level is pretty much unbeatable, thanks to the fact that the slightest touching of a coconut kills you. Why are there coconuts bigger than a guy? It just blows my mind that this Nintendo game has coconuts as an enemy. I mean, sure, there's like nuclear coconuts in Sonic, but they don't fall coincidentally when you walk under them. It just blows my mind.
Now the second game on the list is Super Robin Hood. Now you're pretty much got a good assumption that every game on the cartridge is made by Codemasters. This one's got a pretty amazing uh, title screen from Terry and Danny up here. So can't you easily got all the right logos? Let's see what kind of game it is. More catchy music. Enemy, which is conveniently drawn a lot smaller, spits stars out, is your enemy. Now it's got a nice life bar in the corner with pumping hearts. Now I don't really want to spend much time on this game because it's actually good. Except for the fact you have to be really precise when you're getting on the platforms. Otherwise, well, otherwise, I'll show you on the way back. This happens. And I should easily be able to touch that. Now this game has a lot of grabbing treasure chests and stuff to get through the game. One thing I don't get is this. Why do you spit out hearts when you get shot? The other thing is it's really hard to time killing the enemies. It's kind of like Mega Man, but I don't know. So you pretty much just get to the whole game doing this, trying to hit a bat, and not being able to hit this guy, which I still don't know what he is. What is that? I can go through chains, but if I touch this, you know what? It's a good game, I'll say that, and it's... I recommend this game. Alright, the so third game on the list is Boomerang Kid. Out of all the games, it's probably got the worst title screen. I mean, look at this. And we've got this kid on the bottom who's seizuring and getting his ass Alright, so I take it that this is Boomerang Kid. So, if A is to jump, then B must be to use your boomerang. Wait a minute, you don't have a boomerang? Oh, there's a boomerang. So maybe I have to go get it first, and then the rest of the levels I'll have my boomerang. So I'll jump over him here, and there. And I don't have a boomerang. Okay. So on to the next level. Wait a minute, I have an option. Okay, let's put a plot of this place. <laughs> Wait a minute. You die if you fall from a height. Now, a lot of games that happens, and I'm not going to be upset about that. But a lot of games, it's not a ridiculously low height. I mean, look at this. I mean, that rarely happens in a game, where a low distance like that. I honestly don't think this is much of an adventure game. It's more of like a... Uh, action game. How am I supposed to get out of that? Well, the entire game's like that. It's got the worst graphics on this entire cartridge. And, I mean, what's the point? Why not just make three games if you're just gonna sheep out on the third game? Final game on the cartridge is Treasure Island Dizzy. And we start off with a lot of nothing. So, we've got money there. So, let's go get the money. Okay, we can't, because there's water. I think it's kind of taunting that they put water at the very beginning of a game. Okay, let's go this way. Wait a minute. The jumping sequence is a flip. Who designed this? Well, hey look, I can pick up a large rock. I'm gonna assume that you put it here, and yeah, you do. Crap a beat. 
Wait a minute. The B turns into money? Sweet. What the hell? Oh yeah, and if you die in this game, you start back at the very beginning. So, have fun. Considering this thing is a full-length adventure game, kind of like Zelda where you have to get clues and stuff, and you only have one chance, and what should be enemies turn out to be money, and the flames on the bridge happen to kill you way after you touch it, and there's secrets that become very complicated. I mean, this game is pretty fun. It's got these cool graphics. Hey, look, another... Wait a minute. If you touch the purple or pink B, you start to moonwalk. I mean, look at this. Michael Jackson invents this game. Speed of gene. Now, one thing I probably should mention is that Comerica made this game. Well, they licensed it. Do you know what else Comerica licensed? The Game Genie. The Game Genie had the ability to make characters moonwalk, so I guess they just put the feature right in. Now, the moonwalking feature is cool, but it gets old because you have to hit reverse keys, and then you can't do as much. So, essentially, you have to run around picking up clues. Now, this game's fun, except you get about an hour into it, and you happen to hit one of these traps, which are hidden, and guess what? You die. So, for that reason alone, I don't recommend putting a ton of effort into this game, because... You're just going to end up dying and being mad at yourself. But, if you want to spend a bit of time, then this game's fun. Well, I'm finally done this golden piece of junk. Well, I mean, you can't expect much from a game that's not Nintendo licensed. Because, I mean, they... Usually, there's a reason they aren't licensed. Now, Comerica games end up being fun. I mean, Line of Spacehead is an okay game, aside from the obvious things I point out. Super Robin Hood's an okay game, and Adventure Island Dizzy, aside from the fact it's got no save feature, and even though you can fall from a mile up, you don't die, you, uh, you can't touch anything, even something way in the background, you die. And there's a lot of hidden things which require kind of exotic tools to find, so I mean, I don't recommend it for that. Boomerang Kid's just a piece of garbage. You know what? I have a lot to say about Boomerang Kid. You know what? I'd rather choke myself on the Power Glove sensor bars than play this game. Because, I mean, even though they might have won a fourth game, it sucked. You know what? I'd rather stick my face in a top loading DVD rewinder than do that. Because it sucks. I'd rather try and fit that on my head. You know what? I'd rather eat Easter grass. Easter grass. I gotta eat this to play that piece of junk game. Cause the graphics suck. You can't jump from any height. The music's repetitious. Yeah, the same song repeats for the first world levels. All of them. I mean, overall, you see one of these gold cartridges in the store, don't buy it. Cause even in position B, it doesn't work. when onion and a smurf.